Welcome to the UK News on October 5th, 2021. Of course, we still have to talk about Brexit. Despite the supply crisis, Great Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson defended his government's Brexit course at the start of the Conservative Party conference. The British voters had given him the task of ending a broken economic model in the United Kingdom that was based on low wages, low skills and chronically low productivity, Johnson told the BBC in Manchester on Sunday. And he said, we are moving away from that now. Yeah, where this leads we see. <clears throat> in Great Britain, there is currently a lack of fuel at the petrol pumps and long queues have been forming in front of many petrol stations for two weeks. The reason for this is an estimated 100,000 missing truck drivers. As of yesterday, 200 military personnel are to help with the fuel distribution. In addition, there are already empty shelves in many supermarkets because of the supply problems and retailers fear for their Christmas business. And the meat industry warns that tens of thousands of pigs will have to be burned in the coming weeks unless foreign slaughterhouse workers and butchers come into the country. Johnson's government has therefore announced the granting of up to 10,500 temporary work, work visas and did not rule out further temporary permits on Sunday. However, Johnson rejected a general relaxation of the tightened immigration policy after Brexit. He did not want to use the lever of uncontrolled immigration and let low-wage workers into the country, the 57-year-old told the BBC. And he said, so yes, there will be a time to adapt. The leading members of uh, Johnson's Conservative Party met on Sunday for their first annual meeting since the start of the pandemic. Last year's conference took place online. Johnson is not due uh, to give a speech until the end of the four-day conference tomorrow. Protesters had already gathered near the conference venue in Manchester on Saturday. Corrupt Tory government, liars, cheaters, charlatans, out with them, it said on a banner. Dem demonstrators also protested on site on Sunday. On a sign they demanded, for example, cut the war, not the welfare expenditures. On the eve of the party congress, Johnson had been stressedly relaxed and uh, self-confident in his actions. This conservative government has a track record of meeting people's priorities, he said cheerfully on Saturday. He emphasized that he had kept the election promises with the implementation of Brexit and promised to advance his development plan from infrastructure to climate change for the period after the pandemic. Johnson, who took office in 2019 with a landslide victory, can boast a successful vaccination campaign, but his administration still faces a number of problems, from taxes to immigration. He also drew the ire of some Tory colleagues for breaking his election promise not to raise taxes. Instead, he announced massive new spending on health and social services. Well, Christmas, we all have in our ears still last Christmas, but this will last till Christmas. Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson has dampened hopes for Christmas without bottlenecks at petrol stations and supermarket shelves. He shared Treasury Secretary Rishi Sunak's assessment that the crisis could continue into the holidays. Johnson said that in the BBC interview on Sunday. At the same time, the Prime Minister admitted that a shortage of truck drivers had been emerging for a long time. Motorists in the UK are currently struggling to get petrol or diesel because there are not enough truck drivers. Long queues form in front of the petrol stations and many of them are no longer available at all. The situation is particularly tense in London and the southeast of the country. In Scotland and around the north of England, however, there were signs that the pressure was easing. Because of the exit from the EU, many truckers also left the country and returned to the European continent and don't want to return, by the way. The fuel crisis also threatens to overshadow the Manchester Conservative Conference, I just talked about it, which has been running since Sunday, when Johnson wanted to focus on post-pandemic economic recovery. Yeah, reality wants to focus on something else. 
A desperate letter campaign caused astonishment among Germans in the country, in which apparently indiscriminate people with appropriate driver's licenses were asked to get behind the wheel of a truck, even if they have never done this before. Because class dri driving, uh, class 3 driving licenses, you might have heard that in another video of mine, which were issued in Germany up to 1992-1999, also allow trucks um, to drive a truck up to 7.5 tons, according to the report by the Independent, thousands of Germans received corresponding letters. Despite the bottlenecks, Johnson does not want to give in to calls for relaxation of the tightened immigration rules after Brexit. The consequence of this is that wages do not rise and the quality of jobs that does not increase, Johnson said. The UK economy must end its dependence on poorly paid foreign workers in order to become a well-paid, well-educated, highly productive economy. When will he ever wake up? The UK is, and I repeat myself a thousand times, they are currently short of 100,000 lorry drivers. This has already led to empty shops and supermarkets. There's also a significance of, of shortage of skilled workers in other sectors, such again as the meat industry. Large numbers of workers from Eastern EU countries have emigrated since the British decided to leave the EU. In order to get the fuel shortage under control, as I said, the government announced on Saturday that it would extend the deadlines for the work visas already planned. Instead of Christmas, they should now be able to stay until February. Well, they don't care. It's temporary, so that they don't want it. But Boris anyway wanted a global Britain. And a two-week international exercise of the Scottish coast completed two years of intensive training for the Portsmouth-based warship HMS Prince of Wales. We have taken the last hurdle and are now a full-fledged aircraft carrier that is ready for missions around the globe within 30 days, said the captain of the HMS Prince of Wales, Captain Steve Higgin. Thousands of service members from a dozen nations participated in the combined UK-NATO exercise Joint Warrior and uh, Dynamic Marina, which ended on Thursday. The Prince of Wales and the amphibious flagship HMS Albion led the Royal Navy involvement. Albion? I heard that one before. Three British F-35Bs from 207 Squadron were on board HMS Prince of Wales. The pilots conducted carrier qualifications day and night to ensure they were ready for the upcoming missiles while the ship went through the FOST, the Fleet Operational Sea Training Program. Part of the exercise also included HMS Prince of Wales launching drones from its flight deck as the Royal Navy begins researching the use of UAVs on Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers. Catapult launched Kinectic Banshee Jet 80 Plus were used. The jet powered Banshee, which looks like a mini warplane, can soar up to 25,000 feet fly just above the waves and reach speeds up to 400 knots, that's about 460 kilometers per hour. Difficult to spot on radar, it resembles an incoming missile, making it a realistic opponent for seafarers training to ward off air threats. And in Wales, Health Minister Elnett Morgan has confirmed more than a billion items of free personal protective equipment, so-called PPE, that have been issued to the NHS and social care sector across Wales since the start of the pandemic. Since March 2020, the Welsh Government has been working with NHS Wales Shared Services Partnership to provide free PPE to everyone working in health and social care. Free PPE will continue to be supplied to primary care and social care for as long as it is needed during the pandemic. A service level agreement with the Welsh Local Government Association, which makes sure social care services, including care homes, receive PPE, and it has been extended to March 2022. Health Minister Elnett Morgan said about this, We are passing a significant milestone of issuing a billion pieces of PPE. I want to pay tribute to the continued efforts of NHS Wales Shared Services Partnership in sourcing and providing PPE to keep our frontline health and social care workers safe during the pandemic. The supply and distribution of high quality PPE continues to be a critical part of our response to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. As we plan ahead for winter, 
And with COVID-19 continuing to place our health and social care systems under pressure, I am pleased to confirm that our PPE stocks are stable and we are working closely with NWSSP to ensure that we have at least 16 weeks supply available. Our dedicated health and social care workers are working on the front line of this pandemic and we are committed to continuing to provide them with free PPE as long as it is needed to help keep them safe. And that sounds quite good. And a new safety system of regulation in Scotland to promote accountability, transparency and independence is being proposed to meet the needs of the legal sector and consumers. A consultation has been launched and will run until December 24th to seek views on options to change the way legal services are regulated and how the legal complaint system operates. The options will promote competition, innovation and the public and consumer interest in an efficient, effective and independent legal sector. Legal services contribute to the social value of Scotland and there's significant diversity in the types of legal services people access. Many will interact with legal services when buying a home or writing a will. There are also a range of commercial matters supported by legal services from the small business to the multinational corporation. The legal sector in Scotland is worth over £1.5 billion to the Scottish economy each year and is responsible for over 20,000 high-value jobs. Not only an economic generator in its own right, but a profession that plays a key role in the infrastructure supporting growing sectors, including financial services, renewables and bioscience. The options include three potential models of regulation developed collaboratively with stakeholders representing the legal profession and the consumer interest. It will also provide an opportunity to create a new statutory framework for a modern forward-looking regulatory system for legal services in Scotland. Community Safety Minister Ash Denham said about this, we have one of the best legal professions in the world. However, improvements to the regulatory structure and delivery are needed to further support access to justice. The need for regulation reform is well understood and supported by the legal profession and organizations representing the consumer interest. It is widely agreed that some aspects of the current system can be significantly improved, such as current restrictions which may inhibit competition in the sector and the complex complaint system. This consultation signals the Scottish Government's willingness to take forward supported recommendations that will deliver an enhanced system of legal services regulation. We want a modern, forward-looking legal services regulation framework that will best promote competition, innovation and the public and consumer interest in an efficient, effective and independent legal sector. I encourage all those with an interest in this area to make their views known and look forward to a cooperation. And I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.